In this second video of Hobby Robbie, you will see me milling a lot of plastic chips, sanding a super tiny ring, and printing some odd looking blobs. And with all of that, I will still be trying to build a scale model Formula One car. You pass yourself a plastic kid. I'm a scale model car. You don't know what to do with it. But who will help you Hi, Scale Model Kid lovers, and welcome in my super tiny shed. I want to thank you for all your comments and your likes and all that on my last video, which is my first vlog. <laughs> uh, it's 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 really nice, and uh, it fuels me to go on. And in the last vlog, I told you I would go on with the disaster and that was the front wing that totally failed but i parked it i wanted to do something else so what am i going to do i'm going to scratch build some really tiny objects the mirrors of the lotus 107 ford and if you want to know how that is going you better watch If you are a very observant viewer on my last vlog, you might have seen some parts were missing. In my infinite wisdom, I thought it would be smart to cut the mirrors of the sprue and put them away in a safe place. A very safe place. In fact, such a safe place that I'm not able to find them anymore. Well done, Rob. I do own the Tamiya kit of the Lotus 107B, which shares most of its parts with the 107 I'm building. For a moment I thought of stealing them from this kit, but then I would just move the problem. And I'm not about that. So I took on the challenge to make new ones. Yes, build them from scratch. Formula One mirrors are very delicate objects. At least they are on this car. Everything is done to make it as light and aerodynamic efficient as possible. After all, it just has to carry a small reflective piece of glass. I took some styrene sheet and cut strips from it. Then I stacked and glued the strips together until it formed a bit of mass, just as high as a 1 in 20th scale Formula 1 mirror. With a set of different metal files, I tried to shape the end of the stacked strips into a mirror. The length of the strips formed a handle, which makes it easy for me to create such a small object. I work from rough to fine with my tools and use everything I can get my hands on to sculpt the right shape into the styrene. With a pencil I mark up the other round side of the mirror, after which I carefully cut out the shape, chip by chip. The metal files are ideal to shape it even more. Then the dangerous work comes in. Using a Dremel tool with a flexible shaft to hollow out the mirror body. It takes a steady hand because you can easily damage the sculpt or yourself. After the machining was done, I stepped over to some good old chisels. With those, I stuck and scraped like an old carpenter until I was satisfied. After that I used Tamiya sanding sponges to gradually sand it down. I drilled a hole for the mirror arm and used my chisels again for good measure. But then I had to make another mirror since there are two on this car. And I thought, am I able to make an identical one? I doubt it and decided to go another way. Robbie, Robbie. In a 3D program called Blender I designed the mirror body. I made an output as an STL file and fed it to my 3D resin printer that stinks a lot. After a cleaning bath and isopropyl alcohol it looked like this. 
Oh, and the object below will feature in another vlog. I cut the mirror bodies loose from its sprue and sanded them with sanding sponges. For the construction of the mirror arms I used aluminum tube of 1 mm thick. I made a workbench of plywood and taped the tube to that, but that clearly doesn't work. Putting the tape closer to the cutting point is better, but it's not good. The piece of aluminum tube is the horizontal part of the mirror arm. The hole is made for the vertical part. I cut the tube to length with my trumpeter saw, which is a nasty business as you can see. I cut a piece of brass rod to the length with my Dremel, a lot better. Still using masking tape as a placeholder. It doesn't work, Rob! I changed this method in a later stage of the build when making drive shafts. By then I modified the plywood workbench with some slots I made where I can keep a small tube or rod steady. I did some filing with diamond files and after that all the parts for making a mirror from scratch were there. For these materials, brass, aluminium and resin, you best use CA glue. I dip the brass rod into the glue and stick it into the drilled hole in the aluminium tube. Underneath the mirror body there is a small joint for adjusting. I made this super tiny ring from the same aluminium tube I used before. The ring is first test fitted to a leftover brass rod. Haha hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks so cute, it touched me. I fixed the ring to the real deal and with that the mirror arm was complete. With drilling a hole in the mirror body for the brass rod and gluing it to the mirror arm, the construction was done. Of one mirror. You guys know I have to do this a second time, right? And now it is time for a test fit. I drilled out the holes in the body of the car and made sure the holes align by using a piece of masking tape. Some sharp viewers might have noticed that a chunk of the mirror wall is missing. That happened because I made the dimensions a little too fine for the printer to print. I stuck a slender piece of masking tape on the face of the mirror to use it as form work. The putty is by Tamiya. I know safety isn't the sexiest of subjects when performing your hobby and of course you would rather buy a new kit for your good money. But it is absolutely necessary, surely with spray painting. I use latex gloves because you don't want thinners and paint on your skin. A good respirator is an absolute necessity. Please don't use face masks people. I also use safety goggles when I airbrush, just to prevent that solvents or paint get in my eyes. Grey surface primer from Tamiya is applied on the mirror to ensure good adherence. Then my self-mixed Castro Green, which is a blend of unknown proportions of Tamiya LP6 and LP8, is sprayed on. I apply the paint in a thin coat for the first layer and a little heavier coat for the second one. After that had thoroughly dried, I spray two coats of Tamiya LP9 Gloss Clear. It looks nice and shiny, doesn't it? To determine the right color for the mirror arm, I inspect my collection of pre-sprayed plastic spoons. These are really handy to have. On the curved shape of the spoon you can judge the color quite well. These colors are from Alclad. I chose a color I really like. Exhaust Manifold. It has some slight reddish tones and stands out. I prepared this tiny spray job by masking off the mirror body. Alclad metal colors always need a black gloss base. I had a bottle of black gloss base which I bought about one and a half years ago. I put the base coat into the airbrush cup but it looked really gooey. The bottle had a strange shape too, as if the thinner had evaporated and caved itself in. I tried to get the paint going with Tamiya thinner, but it didn't work out. My spray gun was all clogged up. So I went to my local hobby store who were happy to replace the bottle, which is a glass one now. 
and that can be seen as a confession of the manufacturer that the plastic bottles weren't suitable, right? This new L-clad black gloss base was tested on my poor Jaguar and then sprayed on the mirror arm. With my hobby uh, vibrator. I mixed the exhaust manifold paint, test sprayed it on the Jag, which has about a million paint layers on it now, and then gunned it on the tiny mirror arm. I must confess that I was too hasty and applied too much paint which caused some crazing. Besides that, I did not like the color that much on this subject. It's just too reddish. So back to square one and I chose Tamiya LP54 Arc Iron, which is probably dark iron. I sprayed it on the spoon to see how it looked and also have it as a reference for later use. Then I applied the dark iron on the mirror arm and finally the Christmas like unpacking of the mirror body could be done. That's one nice looking mirror isn't it? But one thing is still missing. That reflective piece of glass I was talking about earlier. I will use Mirror Finish by Hasagawa to replicate that. I translated the back of the packaging, which is in Japanese, and an important remark is that this stuff scratches easily and conforms to almost all surfaces. The mirror sheet is really shiny too. Say hi to Hobby Rubby! I use a kitchen towel to protect the sheet and start with outlining the mirror pieces on the backing paper. And some heavy music to keep me going. I cut it out with a fresh knife blade. But that had a surprise. Oh shoot. Look at this. That just came off. Sorry about the music. <laughs> oh shoot. Look. With cutting it just slid off the backing paper. So I tried it again and this time used Tamiya's decal scissors to make the small cuts. That worked. Then the super fiddly job of separating the mirror stickers from its backing paper and another super fiddly job to stick the sticker on the exact right place, which is not so easy. You just need to take your time for it. Quite some time. So I kept on repositioning it until I thought it fit snugly into the mirror body. For burnishing the sticker I used sharp pointed cotton swabs. Unfortunately I was not able to burnish the sticker to my full satisfaction. A nasty looking edge on the sticker made me decide to remove it and make a new one. Again. But when I applied that new sticker the same problem appeared. The cause of this is the prying of the sticker from its backing paper. That makes the sticker wrinkle a little. It made me go a different route. Why not leave the backing paper on and glue it in its place? That turned out to be the best bet. The mirror is now nice and flat. That's better. And there they are. Don't they look cute? Would you like to know how much time this cost me to make from scratch? Don't go anywhere, because after me talking, there's going to be the end shots of the mirrors. So keep watching. <laughs> okay, how much time did I spend in making these mirrors? Well, from designing to finishing them, it took me 23 hours. And I did not do this in one day, my friends, because then I only would have one hour of sleep and I'm not going to make that. <laughs> Something else. I have got my first patron, my first supporter, and it's Dafoka. Dafoka, thank you so much for doing it, for supporting me. And you people, you can support me too. Go check it out on www.patreon.com and fill out my name in the search bar and you'll find me. I have three different tiers that give you different kind of goodies. From behind the scene photos to high quality reference pictures to 3D designs to print yourself. 
You can also help me by gently touching that like button over there and subscribe yourself and comment because I really would like to know have you ever scratch built yourself? Please let me know in the comments. And now the end shots, but before that, don't be sobby. Build a car model kit and watch Hobby Robbie. <laughs>